Um, how about government? Is the government going to help us when you're 65? And uh, I, I don't want to excuse to anyone, but that's a real fact. On an average in the United States, $294 plus or minus you're going to get when you retire. Is this enough for you? You worked all of your lifetime and uh, you're going to live poor of your most precious time when you wanted to live. And this is a fact for 65 years age who are in the United States right now, as you can see, one person considered rich who are really rich. They are Caribbean, Bahamas, everywhere, enjoying their life. 4% considered comfortable, 5% still working, 56% need government assistance, and 34% are, are dead. All right, so, but it's different for you. Like, we are the millennium, but it's not the fact. The fact is, Ernest Yair's report says 74% of us will run out our wealth and money during our lifetime. So we have to be really careful what we are doing, basically. And we don't have to forget about the technology. We are living longer nowadays. Um, that a lot of different technology is making us alive. So that means the statistics that 50% of the chance that 92 years of the age, one of your husband or wife, whoever you're living with, they're going to need them. So make sure they have enough money to live. And what about you? I know most of you, besides some of you, are maybe nervous. But uh, is that too long, too late to learn something new for your life? Financial freedom, what we learned in university, colleges, MBA, or if you are into PhD, into economics or something, we always taught go for real estate, investing, trading, or become an entrepreneur. But is that the fact, is that the true fact that, that can sustain us? Um, if you see the statistics for post market, bear market, and the stock market, most of my life I stayed with uh, venture capitalist and uh, wealth management, asset management, Fortune 500 companies, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley. I worked with them. So basically what we have seen, 95% of the traders, they lose money. That means there is no option you can make money from there. 90% of the hedge fund, they can't even reach their goal, the performance. Now the last point is to go into the trading business. At the end, you need money basically to sustain. It's rather you lose your own money. At least you can tell yourself that I have enjoyed, I lose my own money rather than give it to somebody. Now come to the real estate. I don't want to be point out to any realtor or any mortgage or mortgage runs our economy, United States basically. But think about the mortgage headache that we have. It's a tenant issue, maintenance issue. Many of we are facing right now, the homeowner. Then call 24 seven issues matter, insurance taxes, negative equity, and who knows where the real estate market is going actually. Right, no one knows. You don't. You are not in control for real estate market, basically. It's a different game there, into the stock market, hedge fund, and uh, housing market syndicates. You can, you me, single homeowner cannot control the housing market authority. And now, is this our fault? It is not basically our fault. If you follow what your parents did or what our parents did, we'll be dead broke, basically in the new era or on the new economy. As you can see, the left side, this is you and me, regular people. We have our regular problem. And the right side, that's the traditional businesses. 96% of them are failing and it will fail with traditional business methodology wise, if they wanted to do. And this is a new technology-based uh, entrepreneurs who will connect actually with both of these people and live their life with a successful life. Why is it? If you follow the last slide, that why that is most important, 
You can see the Uber, right? The biggest taxi company in the world, they don't own any single taxi, right? Think about like Facebook, biggest content creator in the world. Mark Zuckerberg, I, I know hardly he makes any statement every day, right? We all are making them the biggest content creator in the world. Airbnb, largest property owners, rate renters, but they don't own anything. Same thing for Alibaba, right? Same thing, booking.com, largest hotel preservation industry in the world, marketplace, they don't own anything. So that means eBay is also the same. What they're doing actually, this is something we need to think. So the world, the way it is heading nowadays, we have to understand the digital marketing and advanced digital marketing technology. Traditional digital marketing is not going to work anymore because it's the AI, artificial intelligence, data science, people's human behavior, data, those are very important facts. So if you are the entrepreneur, I'm just treating everyone as an entrepreneur here, I'm assuming. So basically, you have to understand how the digital marketing are changing. It's a videography, right? Things that if you have seen the TikTok came in, then YouTube short starters, then now Facebook is trying to go into the that era, basically. So videography era is another terminology changes that you have to adopt and you have to sustain into that market. So basically, if you learn advanced digital marketing technology, you can be the middleman, help actually also these niches, like doctors, dentists, lawyers, accountants, CPA, chiropractors, coaches, any service market, your name of, they need help basically. Everybody needs their customers, right? So basically, the traditional way, the way it's working with print media or just Facebook posts, it's not going to work us. So you have to understand your customer behavioral data, what they want, how they feel it, how you're going to compete with, think about like um, all the big hospitals. They are making satellite nowadays clinics, right? I don't want to mention anyone's name. How the regular doctors will compete? Maybe we are the first generation of Bangladeshis. How about our sons? Are they really going to go to that doctor or that lawyer? Or that accountant who doesn't understand their problem or their psychology. Where are you heading? So this is the situation of uh, e-commerce industry currently. As you can see, 7.9 trillion people in this world. And everyone has their own problem. And 70 million millionaires in this planet one in every 500 people, they're millionaire. If you see the background of this, most of them came from technology and who are adapting fast, you will be enriching there very fast. And 99% people, they are not the millionaire. It's not their fault, but why not you? Why you cannot reach to their position or something? People don't spend money on what they basically want. They spend money on what they want, right? You just have to be passionate and you have to understand your customer behavior. And that's where we engineers, I'm a tech engineer, we are working with the Hadoop and our language, data science, uh, customer behavioral data is our, we are working on it for many platforms. So basically, as you can see, are you able to understand your future customer demand? And that's the really most important thing because each customer data can generate you $3 per month on an average. So if you have 15,000, and if you understand your customer data, that means $15,000 you can generate a month through different service-oriented e-commerce or whatever niche you are talking about. And this is the future of our e-commerce, as you can see. And this is for female, male, everyone. I'm just targeting all the females because they're the biggest spender and the shopper in any economy. 2021, we had $659 billion spenditure into e-commerce. 
2022, we are expecting is going to cross $700 billion. And 2023, we are expecting $735 billion. Are you going to take any place to be part of it? How are you going to compete with Amazon or big like marketplace? Can you space yourself to be the ambassador? And the real size of the e-commerce is just the tick of the iceberg. As you can see, we have seen in Thailand, it crashes. So basically, this is still very much untouched. It's still in the bottom, but you can take many of these places and make yourself fortunate. If you learn the real way to understand your customer behavior and what they basically want. And the most important reason most of the entrepreneurs or businesses fail, that is lack of knowledge, sorry. Lack of knowledge, lack of support, and too comfortable and take no action. As I was telling, if you're a doctor, if you're a service provider of any kind, lawyers, CPA, I can name them, there might be 200 of them. Uh, you cannot sustain with, if you continue, whatever you've been doing. Because the time has come, everything is getting through artificial intelligence and data science. Customers' behavior, capturing with the big players, you cannot sustain with them unless you follow and use the correct tool and the right tools to be completed. So, the who, not how. This is the most important thing the Founder Institute taught us in Silicon Valley. Because as you know, when we make our any of our businesses, any technology, you need a big team. When we start, we might have three or four team players, right? So many things you have to wear, many different hats. So most of the time people fail because they always try to think, how am I going to fix it? How am I going to take care of it? Not who, basically. You need to find out who can basically help you out, not how. This is the attitude we have to change to be successful, I would say. And this is the same thing, who is who basically. You need to understand what exactly you need and who can basically help you out to bail you out basically from your hard time or the situation or make you successful. And there will be problem, there will be analysis and the solutions. I don't want to go too deep dive. This is more into like, and some of you might tell if you are not an entrepreneur that I don't have any money, but is it really takes money to make you guys successful? It's a very affordable way engineers make such a tools. It makes very, very comfortable and easier. Anyway, I don't want to go through this. This is, uh, Carolyn Takas, who was actually a right-hand shooter, and he is the guy who got actually two times uh, gold medalist in shooting with his left hand. Uh, he lost his left hand, right hand, then he tried hard. So basic thing is that winning of anything, you just have to have your mindset. When people lose their mindset, they lose everything. Consistency even doesn't work. And you have to find the best out of you and the best version of you. Whatever we see ourselves right now, I'm standing here, maybe this is not the best version of myself. We just have to keep working on it. So the obstacle is going to be on our way. As the time is a constraint, I want to go to the very Last page. So basically, from our disorganization, I spoke with the president and a couple of the team members. What we are trying to do is actually we are to help our organization member and whoever is going to join here. Basically, we're going to choose about maybe three to five entrepreneurs monthly. Just help them free. We're going to assist their businesses. We wanted to try to accept them, do their due diligence, and make the report. Do the mentoring, and you can definitely should take this opportunity, being as a member of this organization. And our goal is to make your 
financials from 3x to 5x within one year and uh, using all the tools that's in the market, more proven methodology, more technology, more AI related stuff that can help to understand your customer behavioral data and customers, what they want, what the future customer is going to want and how you're going to compete with your competitors and giant competitors to stay fit in the market in the future. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Sorry for the long speech. Thank you so much. Um, I think um, we do have a lot of speakers, and they've been kind enough to make it today. So I would really appreciate it if you could stick to your time, and I will point when we have about two minutes left, so you know you have two minutes to wrap up. Um, next, I would like to invite a female entrepreneur. I want to make sure that I get the right name. It is with great honor and it's our pleasure that tonight we have amongst us Alif Lela Nabila, Assistant Vice President of Bank of America. We also have tonight Professor Diki, Founder and Board of Director for AIE USA. First, I'm going to invite Professor Hannah to come on to the stage and please speak to us for a few minutes. Please give it up for Dr. Hannah Siddiqui. Good evening. How's everybody doing? Awesome to see you guys here. Um, my name is Professor Hannah Siddiqui. I'm the founder and the board director of Agile Education USA. I am the, um, I'm actually the only professor in the world to have implemented an instructional method that I will be speaking to you about into more than 18 graduate, undergraduate, postgraduate, and professional training courses. While my slides are coming up, I want to congratulate the winners. I don't know where you guys are. Congratulations to you. Shout out to the organizers. USBCCI, the president and the founder. Shout out to you too. This is an awesome event. Again, it's great to be here and an honor to be here, to be able to speak with you. So I am, as you see, one of the actually only professor who's an email, who's a hijabi, Bangladeshi American, only strong trainer. I, I'm honored to be speaking to you today about gender gap, gender inequality in education. Yes, the gender gaps in schooling, attainment, have declined over the century. However, we are far away, far away from where we want to be. All right? I have some data. I'll be sharing with you. According to UNESCO, education and gender equality is global priority at the moment. Um, and it is also linked with its effort to promote the achievement of sustainable development goals. The Education 2030 agenda recognizes that gender equality requires an approach that ensures that girls and boys, women and men, not only gain access to quality education, but also empower equal through in completing education cycle. Now I can stand here and give you that type of data, heartbreaking data, 
but I'm not here to just point out the facts and the data to you. I'm here to offer a solution. I'm here to offer a solution, a system why transformation is needed, is required, and that is what I'm going to be speaking to you about. As I mentioned, I am an Agile educator. I'll explain to you what Agile means. However, our keynote speaker, when he was speaking to us about business strategies, traditional business strategies, non-traditional business strategies, I was hoping he would mention Agile, right? And some of the things he also mentioned that if you want to sustain and do good, and you want your business to sustain, you must adopt agility, right? You must also adopt innovation system have implanted with agility. But in any case, he actually, I've seen his slides and his information, and I've seen some of his strategies are directly aligned with adult strategies. So, thank you. I have a question for you. Would you, would you drive a car that is 100 years old and broken? Anybody? No, no right? Well, then why are we using an education system that is more than 100 years old? It is absolute. It is meant for only top 2% of the population. Ladies and gentlemen, is our education system designed to prepare our students, future workforce, future generation, to acquire the 21st century skills? The answer is no. To me, and according to a few of my uh, colleagues that I work with, I believe that 21st century education is supposed to be about creating creators, right? 21st century education is supposed to be about creating creators. Now, as I told you, I'll, I'll tell you what agile teaching and learning is. Agile teaching and learning is an innovative method. And it aligns with 21st century education and that has the essential components, the essential components to prepare the students to take part in the VUCA world. Okay? And when VUCA world, <laughs> it's a political term, um, which, which means that we have to prepare our students where they can take part in a world where certain uncertainty is the only certainty, right? You have to be able to change yourself, adapt, change, and be flexible, right? That is, in a short, simple term, is what agility stands for, agility means. Now, I want to share with you some data. This is from my own case study. I had implemented this method for a few years. I've been using it. I started collecting data for a couple of years now. Now, this data is from 2020. However, the percentage here, can you see? What percentage is that? 32%. Thank you so much. You guys are paying attention. Yes. So what I wanted to share with you is that in 2019, I had been practicing using Agile in the classroom for a while. I collected the data for a year at the moment. 32% increase in student engagement had happened in just two weeks in one of my courses, one of the most challenging courses I teach business analytics. 32% increase in student engagement had happened within two weeks period. My students were struggling. 
my student engagement rate was only 61%. I was concerned. I knew I had to do something. I had to help my students. My students are extremely enthusiastic. They wanted to learn. I was helpless. I did not know what to do. I have then adopted adult teaching and learning. My success story continues. The data that you see here on the screen is actually from winter 2020 semester. And that's when the pandemic hit. And during the pandemic, the student engagement rates and the dropout rates, especially in the New York City, is heartbreaking. It was extremely, extremely low. However, fortunately for my classes, for my students, my student engagement rate, these three courses, two of the courses, 100%. One of the courses, 98%. And I'm the only professor in the college that I teach at. My student engagement rate increased 3%. Retention rate increased 4% which is, again, a very <laughs> different sense of data that I'm presenting you here. The colleges and schools were surprised, and I had so many invites to talk to them about how did you do it? How did you make it possible? Well, my students were already, already acquainted with the method that I use. And during the transition, when we actually had to transition our in-person classes to online, all I had to do is just send out a few emails and send out a few announcements, guys, we're going to be online. They were familiar with the online features. I was familiar with the online features, first of all. While the senior faculty members and the majority of the staff members at the college were going through the trainings, I had to just give an uh, announcement and we were okay. The transition from online, to, uh, from, uh, uh, excuse me, from in person to online was a smooth transition. And so that's another thing that this teaching and um, this teaching and learning method uses a lot of tools, a lot of collaboration tools. 90 to 95% of the time students collaborate with each other. They know how to collaborate with each other when they're in person. They know how to collaborate with each other when they are at home, away, working on their homework assignments or term projects and so on and so forth. Anyway, I also wanted to talk to you about, like I said, business agility. There is a study done. The topic today I want to focus on is the gender inequality in education, right? Now, I'm talking about agile teaching and learning. You're probably wondering, what is the relationship? How are you going to tackle that, right? Good news is the um, remaining ag agility, right, with diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's a very important <laughs> topic and a study. And as an educator, <laughs> this is what I'm actually focusing on. A few of my research projects is actually focused here. So our manifesto, the Agile Manifesto's first value of individuals and interactions over processes and tools implies that for Agile to work, D-E-N-I must be core component. So this is how one of the ways um, I can talk about my teaching methods for hours. One of the ways we ensure equity, inclusion, and diversity. Last but not least, I want to leave you guys with this quote from our Kobe Guru, Romina Tagore. That is, don't limit a child to your own learning, for he was born in another time. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what Agile is. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what
what I use with my students in the classroom in higher education in the USA. It is again my pleasure and an honor to be able to share my story with you. And I hope to see you in the future at another moment. Thank you so much. Enjoy the evening. Thank you so much. See, the ladies just rock the stage. Thank you so much. Um, so next, uh, we're going to have another female entrepreneur, uh, the name that I already announced. We're going to have her here, but here's like something that's going to happen before she comes, uh, which is Alifa. Alifa, where are Alifa? Nabila? Nabila. Okay. All right. So hold on a second. Here's what we're going to do. All right. If you get your all your energy together, we are going to have Miss Alifa come up, but guess what? It's her birthday. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, and thank you so much for leaving your birthday party there. So we're going to expect something here. But again, I appreciate, we all appreciate in USVCTI. Please come on to the stage, Nabila. As Nabila is coming on to the stage, I did um, go over. So she is the Assistant Vice President AVP for Bank of America. Hello. Thank you so much. Um, it means a lot. So first of all, I'd like to thank everyone. Um, for giving me a chance to say a few words. I don't want to go over like, you know, I see that many of you have proper slides, so many things, you were so intelligent. I don't want to go through that at all. It's just my journey. I'm representing my country, Bangladesh. I want to talk about the ambition, okay? I see many people, many women, they are here. Somewhere they're lost. I was struggling initially, but I had my ambition. Luckily, my, I had a very supportive family, and I wanted to see myself somewhere. That's why I'm here, okay? So I'd like to say that ambition is very important. Just think, where do you want to see yourself in five years? I know we have our family, children, which is very important because we women can take care of everything. But this is also important to know your role. If you want to see yourself somewhere, then only you can achieve it. Otherwise not. By profession, I'm an engineer working in Bank of America. I'm leading a team here in the US and in India. I have mentored many people like in my team, uh, groomed them. But what I feel is that in this industry, I see very less Bengali, Bangladeshi are very limited. So. I don't know the reason, but I want to encourage everyone, please take the initiative. If you want, you can do it. If you need any help or any assistance, because information is very important, what I feel. I know many of you struggle. You are in a confusion that, okay, you know, I had this background. Personally, my educational background is commerce. Like, uh, I did my graduations from business administration. But I had the courage. I wanted to see that, okay, I want to choose this career. And I did that. So I want to encourage everybody, if you also want to try, please go ahead. If you need any help, please reach out. But you need to have that mindset that I am ready to do that hard work and see myself over there. Because nothing comes easily. If you see, if you are under a mentor or if you are taking any course, if you feel that that person is going to do your job, that is where you are doing wrong. That person might help you to learn, to you know, uh, make you understand how the industry is working. But you need to do the job. So be smart and you know, don't expect that you know, people will come and then they will feed you. No, this is not true. You need to do your own hard work. So please prepare yourself for that. And uh, thank you for coming here, everybody. Um, it's a nice evening, I would say, and I, I really, you know, uh, I'm happy and excited to be here. Hopefully, in the next program, I'll be there if uh, I'm invited. You know, thank you so much.
Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Happy birthday again. We wish you the best and maybe next year. Maybe next year. It's not going to be your birthday. It's going to be every month and we will see you again. Uh, we wish you the best. Thank you so much. We heard a lot, a lot of entrepreneurship that you are going through with you. You had experience and also thanks for sharing. Uh, we have a lot of women here. They're also um, learning a lot from us, from you. Uh, our next guest speaker is Sheikh Ghali Rahman, founder and CEO, Transfotech Academy. Please. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's been an honor and privilege to be here. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited because we are recognizing our women, our sisters. I definitely want to start uh, by recognizing few of the few of the sisters and women leaders that I personally know. First of all, thanks to Sister Shaila. She's been doing an amazing hosting, like always she does. Um, I know Mary Dubada, uh, Bobby. She's been uh, involved in politics and trying to do good thing. Monica did you right there, and all of you, um, we just learned about Agile. Um, uh, Professor Hanna, um, I, I know you, right? Uh, see, see your good work that you've been doing. Um, personally, I've uh, been and tech entrepreneur lately. I worked in mainstream uh, corporate for 10 years. I've worked with top boards, Accenture, Capgemini, IBM, been through the world, mentored and tra trained a lot of people. Uh, right now, I'm running an academy. And to, uh, it's basically a tech academy. We also offer bootcamp courses. And good thing, which I proudly say that I quit my job last year and came back to the community to help more people to learn and um, take educations and you know give them jobs. That's what they need the most, just like our fathers. So today, our women are here. Um, I don't want to say much, but I like to remember a quote from Napoleon, who was a French empire. He said, give me a good mother, an educated mother, and I will give you a civic educated nation. What does that mean? Women are the key. If we can empower our women, we are in dark. And uh, I have two data that, that surprises me. Today we are here to talk about Bangladesh, obviously, right? Um, it's uh, US, we are the Bangladeshi American Chamber of Commerce. So I'd like to give you some numbers about how our Bangladesh women are doing, right? Obviously there are a lot of people, even including governments are doing a lot of good initiative, but is that, is that enough? We can see only 34% of our Bangladeshi women are in the labor workforce. We definitely need to increase that number. We had the largest GDP raise last year uh, you know, we were uh, we were able to establish our footprint in the nation by that, but definitely we are leaving a big chunk of women poor behind. So we can't really celebrate that. We need to do more. Um, women like Professor Hanna and others need to come forward and educate us on um, how our women can go forward regarding this. So. Um, Talking about our Bangladeshi Chamber of Commerce, I've been involved since very beginning. And uh, please give it a round of applause for the president, Litan, for organizing this event. Um, we had an event in 2018, a large one, where we had uh, four government officials, five government officials from Bangladesh. We had a very productive discussion of how we can educate the women and offer this help. And uh, that, that effort is continued by our uh, U.S. Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce, and we are having this session. We have a list of activities that's coming up. Uh, I just discussed with you know other group members. Uh, our keynote speaker offered uh, help for the women who are um, owning businesses over here with the mentorship and digital marketing and others. And uh, we have many other list of activities coming. Uh, I'm not going to mention all of them right now, but it will be updated in our website soon. And we are also starting um, a job placement and take academy and resume building sessions under our US Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce industry for helping women who's looking for jobs. We know during the pandemic, 
40 million people have applied for unemployment. Job is the least pandemic that is waiting for us after COVID has gone through. And we need to help our women to get back to job and workforce. And we will continue to work on that effort. I'm not gonna um, longer my conversation because we have many, many guests are coming. And gratitude and thanks to all the women who are here. And congratulations to those who are winning awards. We need many more to come. Women empowerment goes on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you again, Mr. Ali. Thanks for your empowering for women. And also, you mentioned a lot of uh, women here who are successful, who are uh, guiding us. So, our next guest speaker is Zaki Chaudhary, CPA, founder and CEO of Zaki CPA PLLC. I would like to invite you. Yeah, do I like go? I have to fix my mark because I'm a little taller than others, so be patient a little bit. Good evening, everyone. It's so nice to see everyone here with this wonderful event. This event is about all recognizing different successful women in the city of New York. Thank you very much for inviting me and I'm being part of this wonderful program. I myself as a Jakir Choudhury CPA, I used to work for JP Morgan accounting firm as well. When I was working for JP Morgan, I did not have a CPA. When I see my colleague was getting more recognized than me, I told myself, what am I doing over here? I need to get my CPA. But as you know, working for corporate world, you don't get that much time to study because every night you come back like nine o'clock or 10 o'clock. I chose myself to be CPA and I, I believe one thing that if there is a wish, there is a way. Can you imagine that I quit my full-time job from JP Morgan to be a CPA? And it took me like a year to study full-time and become a CPA. Then I went back to the corporate world again. And then after one year, I said like, okay, let me open my CPA farm in my community, which I have in, in Bronx right now. The name is Jackie CPA PLLC. I see that in Bengali community, there are not that many CPAs. We need more services. And I'm very happy that I help a lot of people over there to establish their corporation, establish their business. Today's event, let me share, share recent news. As many of you know that, this is the history of the United States. A woman became or acquired the power of president for a shorter period of time. Do you know that? Kamala Harris? She acquired power of presidency while our president Joe Biden was in the procedure. Does it matter how long she was, a she was holding the power? No. Does it matter that she did not do anything as the president would have done it? Not really. However, those women are getting there. Those women are increasing their power day by day. Now, women in 1990 are, or women of current world is way different than 1990s. Women of current world right now, they are working as well as they are raising their kids. Some of them, they choose to go outside. Some of them, they are working from home, like selling clothes, doing IT jobs, or become as an entrepreneur. As you know that, become an entrepreneur, some of them, they chose to have a business under their social security number without creating any corporation. Well, there is a, there is a possibility, there is the advantage or disadvantage. The advantage is that you don't have to cost that much. You can save some filing fees of a corporation, etc. However, there is a risk. Let's say you are doing a business at home and you get a suit. The person who sue you, they can acquire your car. 
they can acquire their houses, they can acquire their personal assets. I'm sure many of you don't want that. What is the other option? The other option is that you can create a corporation. So there are many kinds of corporation you can create it. You can create C Corp, you can create S Corp, you can create LLC. Those are my expertise. So I would suggest each any one of you want to be entrepreneur, want to be bigger, want to create your website, you can have a legal entity created. So uh, as you know that my number is 929-207-1516 and I'm a founder and CEO of Jackie CPA PLLC. I would be more than happy to help if anyone needs any further information about different types of corporation, what are the benefits of tax treatment, you can get it or you can have it. I'm more than happy to. Thank you so much. Enjoy your evening. Again, thank you. It's very honor for me to speak in front of you, such a wonderful people and qualified people right here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you again, Mr. Zakir. Uh, it's really, this is very important. Anybody is opening new uh, business as an entrepreneur, you need him. You need a CPA. Uh, please don't try without CPA because nobody is perfect. They have studied that. They are expert in it. So I would definitely recommend this. Um, our next guest speaker is Dilip Kumar Thankapan, President, World Yoga Community Inc. So this is about yoga. Ladies, please, you, I know you love it. Look, everybody loves it, yoga. You are the rock star today. Namaste everyone. This is my great pleasure and honor to join with you and celebrate women's power. I was looking at the booklet. Approximately 39, 40 people are in this booklet. 20 of them are women. I am so proud of this organization because Sustainable Development Goals at the UN, number five, SDG number five, is gender equality. That is already implemented in this form. Does it matter how many people are here? The product is very wealthy and healthy. I want to thank the president and the MC, all the committee members, and my close friend, Dr. Sima Garatiana, and some of my friends sitting with me. Why I'm here, not for yoga. I made the yoga. You want to do exercise? Yes. Okay, stand up. Only women. Only women. Stand up. Just stand up. Just stand up. Simply stand up. Okay, this just one move. Just one move. Just one move. Just one move. Just women? Yeah. No, we want them to work with us. Only women. Only women. Just 24 hours. Okay. 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 So you are going to do only one simple exercise. Put your hand together. Namaste. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Because you all did a wonderful job as a migrant, as a woman. You all came from different countries with your spirit, through your mother, your grandmother. I will say sorry to you guys because I am representing their religious committee as a secretary of the religious committee at the UN, I want to say sorry what we did wrong to you. I want to say all to men, you have to upgrade yourself. You have to update yourself. A family means a woman and men working together, respect each other. We can all sit now. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Some of us are wearing heels, so we need to sit down. <laughs> so you did a tadasana, a standing pose. You just listen to me, but you didn't feel it. You are doing an asana. That's a current part. So as a human being, you may have a different religion or a culture or a language. Our duty to be a divine chosen being on this earth. You may think, who is this guy from India? Who is going to teach me something? No. And I came from Indian family. My mom is there. 
Hindu. My father is Orthodox Christian. We have bishops and monks in my family. I travel around the world. I spend time with the people. I never look their color or language or their wealth or health, even a dollar. We are here to uplift people. That's the part I enjoy. I want to say to the president, you did a good job, and all the committees, because those who need help, we had to go and support. You may see a lot of great photos, me and some uh, world leaders on my Facebook, but 24 7 I work for actually in grassroots food level. You think a world can change only through our dedicated work. We have an opportunity to come to this country and work with other people from different countries and religious backgrounds. You may have to change yourself before changing someone else. So you learn from others and you practice in your life, then you teach people. That's a part I was listening to our professor. Wonderfully, I know she needs more time to explain this as a real workshop. She finished within the short period. Definitely, I'm going to call her for some of my events. So, you think a world needs a globalized system, a healthy globalized system, a healthy spiritual system, a healthy monetary system. Something wrong going on around the globe. Some people are making tons of money, so some people don't have anything. Is that correct? No. Some people love the currency more than a family member. Is that correct? You look around the world, all the animals and birds, you know, all animals, are they living with the currency? That's the wrong idea. We connect to heart to heart. And we help people, those who really need them. That is the part most of the mothers will do. You look at your family, how mother is loving their child. Don't think about how much balance is the bank. Money should use for proper method. Ekraya vikraya, you give and take, like a bridge. When you make a bridge, car will go to the other side, and the other side, bring a car here. Then the value of life will full fledged. Otherwise, it is not. So, we had to change the education system. Like a professor said, 100 years of slavery we are facing. Not only 100, more than that. See, the history of India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan that destroyed the country because of the slavery. Look at in America, we had the slavery. So, that has to be changed. So we immigrants, I, I had to say some of the uh, political leaders are coming in forward to leave the country. All the women should run for the election. You should make your children to capable to run the country. Put them in good educational schools. Make them study and get more degrees and change this country. This country can lead the world. We already seen that one, but second part, I don't want to say, we may go to other countries and destroy it. That's not, not, not correct. So make sure everybody is equally balanced. Don't put a one religious higher than another one. That's a wrong idea. We should embrace everyone, open up ourselves, and make sure if you see somebody, even in the hall, somebody is coming from the, the door, just go to them, welcome. This, this is a quality of a human being. Open up your heart, make embrace. So without further too much thought, I want to finish with one dialogue. I want you to repeat. Begin the day with love. Please say. Spend the day with love. Fill the day with love. End the day with love. That's the way to go on. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much.
much. Uh, I was hoping that we would get some more moves in yoga, but we just, I tried. I really tried, ladies, but we just couldn't. So I guess we have to visit him to make sure we do. So I know that we uh, just heard that we start the day with love, right? And we go through the day. So what happens if we get angry? And I don't feel like loving anybody. So when happens, and I'll give you the answer. Well, the has some you say. You Do know, you? Okay. You know, yeah. You, somebody want to laugh it? How do you laugh? What do you smile? Then ha 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 Just laugh it. All the sense will come out. So let's say if that doesn't work either. So then you'll come to me because I'm a mental health counselor. See, it has to come to me, so. So yes, so I have, I'm like listening to everybody and I'm like, let me put my two cents together too. So yes, I have worked hard enough and got two master's degrees and I am licensed to be a mental health counselor and a vocational rehab counselor as a disability specialist. And recently I have joined the United States of Veterans Services as a counselor in their veterans hospital. And I would be the only disability specialist there. So yes, we do start with love, but a lot of things happen in between. We get into some sort of disability, could be mental, could be physical. And then you need help. You need help from the doctors, which is short term. And you need extended life skills, which is long term, from the therapist or a clinician or a counselor. There is a shortage of female counselors, and there is even less of women who are of diverse fields. And because of that, a lot of culture diaspora, religion, gender is look, not looked at. So I am, that's the reason that I wake up in the morning and I would like to help and I do help as much as I can to our women. And women, you are not weak. It's just that we do at least 10 times, if not 100 times more than a man. So next, as we speak of clinicians, I would like to invite our next speaker, Dr. Seema Karatna. I apologize if I didn't get your last name. So I invite you, and uh, I believe you have a Russian language somewhere there. Welcome to our Bangladeshi event. Good evening, everyone. It is such a pleasure to be here. I am honored that I was a Russian speaking uh, woman selected to not only just uh, participate, but to be a guest speaker at another event, at a Bangladeshi event. Uh, I work with many Bangladeshis in the United Nations community because many Bangladeshis uh, have NGOs there and, uh, you know, are related uh, you know, collaborating with the United Nations a lot. So I salute all of you. That's number one. Number two, you know, I will speak about myself a little bit. Um, all of my life, I was fitting three minority categories, which were the so-called taboos of, you know, getting anywhere you want to get in life. So I have been a Russian-speaking Jewish woman, which basically meant if you speak Russian, you know, people are thinking you're, you're either a thief or a bribe, you know, can bribe everyone or, or all the different other things. If you're Jewish, I don't want to even mention that because we all know history, unfortunately. If you're a woman, you're, you have to be suppressed and just sit home and be silent and do nothing. Okay. Uh, however, I always had the positivity and the power uh, of, of positive outlook for the future in myself. That as many times as I am being beaten down is just as many times as I am getting, I'm able to get up even stronger, healthier more powerful, more empowered for the future. And today, I stand in front of you 
as a man as the member of medical expert committee of the world health organization as the ambassador of the largest global organization with the united nations the global peace chain as their ambassador of global peace and public health as a panelist of national and international organizations uh, related to public health care and multicultural initiatives. And I would like to say that my main goal is to encourage all the women not to become feminists because feminism is limited thinking. Feminism is that suppression. Feminism is that fear towards men. And we do not want to have fear towards men because both men and women have a head, have a heart, have feelings, have a soul, and extremities, and a trunk, which means all of us are humans, which means all of us need to collaborate for the purpose of the entire world flourishing. So I'm here to encourage women not to run for political office. I mean, if they want to, I'm certainly going to encourage them.